Hi, my baby. Are you feeling okay? So Bisu had another ruptured anal gland. The last time it happened in my first video, I believe it was January of 2019. And right now it is April of 2021. Um, so the backstory behind it, how I found it, it was a little different from the first time. She was limping. Actually, let me start over. So I bathed her every Monday. Well, Tuesday of last week, we had bad thunderstorm all day, and then it was predicted to have the same bad weather on Wednesday and on Thursday. So three days of really bad thunderstorms, and Bisu hates that. Um, she gets really nervous. I have to hold her. Um, generally, I can put some calming music on that I find on YouTube or give her um, Benadryl, which I've called my vet and asked him how much she needs, and um, that helps calm her down for the most part. But with it going on for three days without stopping, it really worked on her nerves. I couldn't get any work done. So I don't know if that was the cause of her anal gland getting backed up. I don't know. Every time I ask what causes the anal gland to get backed up, I get a shoulder shrug. Nobody knows. Nobody can give me an answer. So I don't know if that was the cause of it, her nerves, and it just backed up. I don't know. But I'll, all I can tell you guys is that three days, back to back, nonstop raining. I was holding her for the most part. Well, I called her the first night it happened, the Tuesday night of the rainstorm. I called her to get brushed for the night. Well, she was in her bed. She starts limping out of her bed. I was like, oh my God, what? Why are you lumping? So I'm checking her paw, the natural instinct, right? Check the paw, something must be wrong with her. So nothing I can find on her paw, nothing on her leg. So I just brushed it off. I, you know, continue to brush her. Next day, she's still limping, but this time she's not, she usually stands on her hind legs like to ask to go out or to, to stand up for a treat or something. She wouldn't even do that. So I was like, okay, something's up. Maybe she pulled a muscle some sort of way. I don't know. So I checked again. I actually wet her paw and her leg. I couldn't see anything. And this was on her left side. So <laughs> she goes outside. She uses the bathroom, but she's struggling to squat to pee, which got me worried immediately. I'm like, something's wrong with her leg. Um, I'm going to have to take her into the vet. Well, the next day, because that was all day, let's see, the rain started Tuesday, that's when I noticed the limping. Wednesday, I was monitoring her, but that's when I noticed she wasn't standing up, and she was kind of hesitant to squat um, by that evening. Uh, so Thursday, I was considering calling the vet to take her in, but she seemed better. She was standing up. She was walking around a lot better, still limping, but I was thinking, oh, well, whatever it was is going away. So I didn't call the vet. So Friday, that was Thursday. So Friday um, and the weekend, still the same. Like, it looks like she's getting better, but she's not quite fully there. Well, come Sunday, she starts limping again and she won't stand up. She's eating fine and everything. She's going to the bathroom okay. Like I'm checking her stool, everything. Like, you know, I, when something is up like that, I go and look at their stool after they use the bathroom so to make sure it's looking normal and it was. So nothing there, no sign of anything wrong other than her limping and I'm curious to know what in the world she could have done. Is it a muscle? Does something sting her? Is there like a sticker in her paw? What is it? So Sunday, like I said, she's back to really not walking around good, wouldn't stand up or anything. So I was like, okay, well, Monday's her bath day. So I bathed her Monday, but it was late uh, by the time I got a chance to bathe her. Well, Monday, when I put the water all over her body, I could really see everything very well. And then sure enough, there was a big red bump um, on her left side, right next to her um to her opening of her butthole and there was a pocket of fluid underneath it and I was like crap it's another her anal gland is backed up now I have not expressed her anal glands even after the first time her anal gland ruptured 
I was not doing it. So that's on me. That's my fault. Um, I'm too nervous to do it. So, and I haven't talked to my vet about it yet. So I knew it was her anal gland was the cause of her limping. So why it got backed up again, I'm blaming it on the rain and her nerves, but that's just me speculating. I have no idea. The vet's not saying that that's why either. Um, so I called and I called to make her an appointment Tuesday the next day and she was able to go see the vet um, in the afternoon, Tuesday afternoon. And when he saw her and at this time, well, back up a, a little bit, Tuesday morning when she had to use the bathroom, that's when it ruptured because then the blood came, uh, it started getting slimy and oozing. Um, her butt was a mess and I I normally don't wear, after her haircut, I don't put these little ponytails on her anymore because it's um, shaved in the back so I don't have to do this. But because of the anal gland, I did put this back up because it gets messy. It does ooze and bleed and stuff. So um, my, it, I didn't do this that morning and I should have in preparation just in case it would have burst, which it did and uh, it ruptured, so it got messy. So I had to take her in after she finished using the bathroom and very, very gently brush her hair into these um, divided ponytails to kind of get everything swooped away from her bum. So he took her in and right away, he said, I'm gonna have to give her a sedative to kind of put her out a little bit. And um, he said he's gonna get squeeze it out, everything, because he saw the chart. He thought it might have been her right side that ruptured, but it was the same side as the first time, the left. And it was a different vet that um, took care of her the first time. So he says maybe everything didn't come out and that's why it backed up again. He goes, I'm just gonna really get in there. So that made me nervous. I'm like, oh my God, I don't wanna hear her squealing from the other room. I'm. That's just me. I'm just such an overprotective dog mom. And I know that sounds nuts to a lot of people, but that's just how it is with me and my dogs. I'm very overprotective of them and I don't want them in pain. Well, anyway, so he took her to the back and took care of it. I didn't hear anything, thank God. <laughs> um, he brought her back to me and gave me some liquid medication for the infection, you know, prevent infection and uh, told me to monitor her, make sure she doesn't lick it. So I'm not thinking like, oh my God, I don't have a cone or anything like that. I've never had to have a cone on them because when they were spayed, they wore a baby onesie that seemed to work, but I don't have that anymore. So I asked on Instagram for some suggestions. So I'm just gonna show you a little peek of what it looks like right now. It is very messy on her bum. I don't, I didn't wash it. so. There's um, dried up blood back there. The inflammation's down, so you will be able to see the little hole it leaves, um, the open sore. Um, from the first video, I do get a lot of questions about this. I'm not an expert. I have no idea. I'm just sharing what's going on with my girls. For the most part, they're healthy, other than Bisu having this happen to her for the second time. I don't know what to tell you to do if you don't have a decent vet in your area or a decent groomer that can express their anal glands. I can't suggest whether you should or shouldn't express their anal glands. I'm not a medical professional to give that kind of advice and I don't feel comfortable telling you what you should or shouldn't do with your dog. So just kind of addressing some of those possible questions that may come up in this video um, once it's put up because I sure was getting a whole bunch of those kind of um, what do I do I don't have a vet in my area or you know people are just asking me a lot of things that I I have no idea how to answer them um so here we go let me see so she's still a little groggy from the sedative she's been sleeping all day for the most part see so you can see her tail is pretty nasty so it's her left side, so she's laying on it. But if you can see that red dot, that's where it oozes out. Um, she used the bathroom this morning and it, everything was okay. Um, you know, no oozing or bleeding. So I think it stopped, but I've been carrying her everywhere. I don't want her walking. I don't want her jumping. 
So if she needs to come up onto the furniture, I um, pick her up and I put her there. And what I've been using is this old sheet. And I'm gonna show you a spot from last night. See how it oozes? So I always put a sheet onto the furniture. She likes to sit on the sofa next to me when I'm working on invoices and things like that on my computer. So this sheet goes down and she can sit next to me and I don't have to worry about um, any accidents on the furniture. Sleeping was rough because I didn't want her, she likes to sleep in my bed and I didn't want that to be a mess. So I just threw this sheet on top of my covers and I just managed to have her sleep with me. I even put her dog bed on top of my bed so she can stay there and um, she had an old towel in her bed to kind of help in case that oozed. But she's doing okay, she's healing. Um, I actually am going to go to, back to the vet because after the whole thing, I was, I was too worried about getting her home, making her comfortable. Um, so I have a few additional questions. So I'm gonna go back and see him. I'm gonna ask him about um, expressing the anal glands and um, any other questions that I may have. But um, for the most part, I just wanna say thank you to everyone on Instagram that when I posted what went on and I freaked out and I was like, hey, do you guys have any kind of um, ideas for a cone? Cause I don't have one. Thank you all for some suggestions. And I'm just gonna quickly say what some of them were because she's not supposed to lick down there. Um, someone said use a pool noodle. I don't have one, but they said cut a pool, pool noodle and uh, run a string through it and tie it so it can just circle around her neck. So I thought that was a good one. Another one was to use a towel, um, a hand towel maybe because her neck is so small. Roll it up and just clip it. So I thought that was another good one. Oh, baby onesie was another one. But my, my thing was the snaps. I didn't want the snaps to come near her bottom and irritate her, but that was another good one. Um, what I ended up doing was using their baby bibs that I used to wash their face. It's pretty long. It might be for a toddler, not for a baby. But anyhow, I put that on her. I'd snap it. I don't want to, I'm not going to do it with one hand, but see how it kind of covers down here. And she's, it, it's been preventing her from wanting to lick. She hasn't been trying to, but this has been doing it for now. So, <sighs> so here we are, my poor baby. She's doing better, but I'll, I'll keep watching her and, and hopefully this doesn't happen again. And like I said, I'll be talking to my vet about it. Paris is trying to come in. <laughs> so um, thanks again for all the love and the support and the well wishes. We greatly appreciate that and all of your feedback. And hopefully this does not happen again. Thanks guys for watching. Bye.